praise the Lord. Church, I say praise the Lord. I don't know about you. Most of us here, I know you grew up with grandma back in the days. A time like this, what we need to do before we go any further, shake the devil out. You know, grandma has a way they, they sing that song. I don't know if you remember that song here. Yeah. Shake, shake, shake. Stand up, let's do that. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil out. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil out. Everybody, shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil out. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil out. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Before we go ahead, let me just take one minute to really, really appreciate you all, especially uh, the senior pastor of this church, St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church, my brother, my colleague, Reverend Dr. Kevin Timor, for allowing me this great opportunity to come here and occupy his pulpit. Many priests do not do that because they don't know. A lot of you don't trust most of these priests, so you don't just give your pulpit out like there for somebody to come and preach. I really appreciate you. May God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, uh, my brother, friend, Dr. Okudli Obuka. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. God bless you. And all the ministers of God that I've already met, met, I met them earlier this morning when I came in. May God bless you all. I'm more anointing unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another day in your presence. Father, we thank you because the Bible told us that anyone that comes to you, you will in no way cast a wave. Father, we thankful for this opportunity, privilege to be alive today in the land of the living. Father, receive all the glory and adoration in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask that you come and speak to us this moment, Lord. Let me hide while, Lord, you appear before us. Father, come now and increase so I can decrease in our midst. Father, speak through your servant this particular moment. Open up our ears open up our eyes and father open up our hearts for the highest receptivity of your word today thank you king of glory for in jesus name we pray amen, amen. um i will take my text from the old testament and i chose this particular text and uh, theme of this particular text today because of the things going on in in our lives and things that already happen in our life. Sometimes we don't realize that things happen in our life for a reason. God allows certain things to happen in our life. And sometimes we don't really catch it. Sometimes some people ask, God, are you there? God, is God present? Why am I going through this? Remember, the Bible told us that Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered him out of them all, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. Join me quickly as I take our text in the Old Testament, first book of Samuel. First book of Samuel, in that chapter 1. In that chapter... We all can remember a lady called Hannah. Anybody remember Hannah? We will look one or two, three verses of Hannah in this first book of Samuel. He said, Now there was a certain man of Ramatha, Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah the son of Jeroham, the son of Eluhu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, an Ephratite. And he had two wives, Bible said. 
the name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other one was Penina. And Penina, they told us, had children. But Hannah had no children, which is sometimes very, very, very painful for a woman to be childless. It's really very painful. The Bible continues to tell us, he said, and this man, the husband, went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were also there. And when the time comes, that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, even regardless that she is childless. But the Lord has shut up her what? Her womb. The Bible said the Lord has shut up her womb. You will ask, why? Why? Now, let me also remind you that Hannah was just a, a lady just like any one of you here. That's all we can tell about Hannah. The only big news, big story about Hannah was she was childless. She didn't like that. She was taking it okay until the other wife. Oh my goodness. The other woman started harassing him, started bringing that to her face, reminding her of her affliction, yes. which in today, people still do that. Amen? Yes. Each time they go or they went out somewhere, Penina will bring this again up to her, and that became a problem for Hannah. Praise God. And this was so much that she could not take it anymore. But one good thing about it that when there was no way for her, God made a way for her. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we will take this chapter. It's divided into three, four places. We will take one or two to dwell on them. And then we take it from there. Uh, the verses 1 to 8 introduced us to the Samuel's parents. Then verses 9 to 19, Hannah's prayer and vow. That's where I want us to touch on this morning. Verse 11 of that, when this was so much for Hannah, Hannah went to the Lord. After all this while, he real she realized that we had a good friend in Jesus. And I want to let you all know this particular moment. Whatever you are going through in life, yes. I don't care how the magnitude of the things going on in your life. Let us realize that we have Jesus. Like he sang earlier, when you give your life to Jesus, he will never disappoint you. Amen. Hannah remembered that that's still a way I can read Jesus. He, she went back and remembered one of the songs that we used to sing. So, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Hannah sang this song and that particular moment she said, wait a minute I will strike a deal with God Almighty. Amen. Hannah went in. The Bible told us that Hannah vowed a vow and said O Lord of hosts if you will indeed 
Look on the affliction of your handmaid. And remember me. Most of you are thinking God has forgotten you. God I did not forget you. He was, he's waiting for you to reach out to him. Just like Hannah did this moment. He said, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your handmaid. And remember me. And not forget your handmaid. But will give unto your handmaid a man child. Hannah was specific. She knew what she wanted. Amen. I want you to be the same way. Don't let the devil stop you. Amen. Don't let the devil stay in your way. Amen. Open your mouth and talk to God. She, he told us, he said, come to me, all of you that have labored and heavy laden. I will do what? I will give you rest. God is not a man that he will lie now. He's not a son of man that he will do what? Repent. Has he ever said it and never brought it to pass? No. Not my God. Then Hannah said, I will then give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. Hannah said that. And Bible told us that indeed Hannah conceived. This is Hannah that we learn that God has shut up her womb. Like I said earlier, a lot of things that you go through, I go through a lot of times. God stays and watch us. How are we going to handle situation? How are we going to relate to her? How strong is our faith in him? A lot of times we call God Jesus Christ, praise God. Hey, Jesus Christ himself told his disciples, why call me my Lord, my Lord? And your heart is so far away yeah. from me. Most of us, we call on God, but we do not have a heart to reach to him. Amen. 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 This message today is bringing encouragement, uplifting your souls that whatever situation you are in, when you call God, when you ask God, God will answer your prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. I know. How many of you have been here? You've been in what situation that you didn't know what to do, how you can go about it. You didn't know you would make it out. But one way or the other, you made it out. How many of you can bear witness to that testimony here? Amen. Yes, indeed. Amen. Our Lord is a good God. He's a good God. He went further and told us. And uh, Hannah, when she, she went to pray, to talk to God, just like I just told you all. While she was praying in the temple, in the tabernacle, while her priest was there, the high priest called Eli. Eli was sitting on one corner and Hannah was here praying. Unfortunately, what they could see was her mouth turning. They didn't hear any voice. She was trembling. And the priest of the church, the tabernacle, the temple saw her and stood up and said, what in the world are you doing? Will you stop us this drunkenness of yours? Yeah. Poor Hannah. If she was one of those women today, she would be calling a lawyer <laughs> for accusing her being drunk. Amen. But again, because the Holy Spirit has been on Hannah, became part of Hannah, Hannah calmed herself down and simply told the priest, No, my Lord, in that calm voice, in that good voice, in that humble voice, without cursing out the priest. Oh, I don't know if I'm making any sense here. Hannah replied to the priest, Eli, he said, no, my Lord. I am a woman who was pouring up her heart to God for what I want him to do for me. I was not drunk, or I wasn't drinking. I am just here, pouring out my heart to God. Immediately, Eli said to her, 
in indirectly ways, I am so sorry. May your heart desires be accepted by God. And part of the things that helped Hannah was she wasn't rude. She was so humble. She answered Eli, just like any of us here. When your pastor calls you and talks to you, even sometimes when he talks to you in a tone that is not all that comfortable, you can just come down and realize that we are human beings. Don't go out and start calling people, say, see what the pastor, see what he told me today, and all that. Hannah didn't do all that because her focus was on God. Her yeah. focus on what she wants from God. Yeah. You sitting here today, as you are asking God of things that you really want him to do for you, do not let anything come in between you and God. Pour your heart out, just like Hannah did. Hannah succeeded, and God granted her the desires of her hearts. So I pray this particular moment that I don't know what you are going through in life. I don't know the magnitude of the situation you are in this moment. Maybe you heard bad news from your doctor. Maybe you're going through certain things you don't want to discuss with anybody. But I tell you who you can discuss that with. Almighty God. One good thing about God, he has no schedule. Amen. Unlike we human beings, we can tell you when to call us, when to, not to call us, when to see us, when not to see us. God is our God all the time, 24-7. You can come to him, talk to him, and he will hear you. Amen? Amen. When you talk to God, God is willing to hear now compare Hannah and the other lady that was all up in her face because of childlessness. The children that we read that she had, do you, can you recognize or remember any of those children? No. Who do you remember today as far as the children in this particular instance? Samuel. Hannah vowed a vow. Say, I will, God, if you do this. Now, one thing I need you to take note of. When you are in covenant with God, when you kneel down and pray to God, that God, all right, I'll take you on this. Let's strike a deal. And you say, when, if you do this for me, Lord, I will do this. A lot of times, just like we human beings, whenever we get what we want, that's it. God doesn't play that. If you strike a deal with God, God will always meet his own part of the deal. Will you meet your own part of the deal? A lot of times, no. When we get what we need, we don't even go to church anymore. When we get what we need from God, oh, I don't have time to go to church. Oh, I'm working. I don't, Forgetting that you struck a deal with God that if he does this for me, you will do this. Yeah. Now, you've gotten what you want. Now, talk about God. No. Let's go to church. No. Let's go Bible study. No. I don't have time. Let us be very careful because God is not a respecter of anybody. Amen? Amen. And I pray today as many as are here today, that you have heard what Hannah did here. I pray that Almighty God will touch your hearts to realize that we are in a very serious situation in the world today. And the only way we can get over it is with him, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I pray today that as many as have heard this message today, I pray that God will bring you closer to him, will reveal himself to you, and you will live a very healthy, prosperous life in the name of Jesus. 
Let's bow our heads as we pray. Dear Lord and Father, we thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words that we have shared this moment that have flown through us like a mighty river. Father, we bless you that your words will be an investment upon our lives. That when we live from here, Heavenly Father, we will be a changed group of people, Lord. When we live from here, we will be light unto those who are in darkness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words this moment. That when we live from here, Heavenly Father, we will never be the same. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The church said, Amen. Amen.